Hello and welcome to a brief training tutorial video on the shipping container home design software from containerhome.info. Now this is training tutorial number four and I've decided to insert at this location a brief training video that talks about um, problems that new users of the software may experience. Now the software, once you get to the hang of navigation about how we move around in a 3D world, is fairly simple to understand. The insert object function is fairly simple. The move and rotate commands are, are fairly easy to come to grips with. If there's a, a, a repetitive problem that new users tell us about, it's about using the shapes tool or inserting new objects into a scene and having them appear in the 3D world at, at the wrong angle, the wrong location and the wrong plane um, in the 3D world. So I'm going to explain how that happens and how we can avoid it and how we can deliberately create it also if we want to insert objects at a particular uh, position. So let's go over to this 20 foot ship and container module here and I'm just going to put a color tint across that as it might help us to see it a little bit better. Now you can see if I turn my um, rendering engine, you wouldn't normally do this, I'm just going to do this for demonstration on. You can see this object is actually made up of surfaces that are flat um, just like in the real world, this, this um, pillar here is flat and true and square, as is this and this section here. But it also in the corrugated section, just like in the real world of shipping containers, we have flat sections and we have sections that are actually at an angle. They're not 90 degrees to each other. There's an angle between the top of this corrugation and the trough. This rib here is at an angle. And... The reason that sometimes when you insert an object into the scene, whether it's a new shipping container, whether it's a plane using the shape building tool, or whether it's a 3D object from our built-in 3D object library, and it, it doesn't come in true and square, is that you're actually clicking on and inserting on a geometric plane that is on an angle. Software is actually doing what you're telling it to do. So we need to actually look at how we can correctly insert an object into a scene if we're having a problem with angles. So let's go back to the solid render mode. And I'm actually going to um, click on the object here and I'm going to deliberately try and cause this fault. It doesn't happen all the time, so please bear with me. If I click on this angle here and then go to my 10 foot shipping container, it's happened perfect for me. You can see the objects come in on an angle and the reason that happened was the point that I nominated as the insertion point, it wasn't a flat surface. It, I was actually clicking on the angle of the container surface. So let's click on and delete that object and show you how we need to do it. What we need to do is we need to click on a surface that we know to be flat. So this railing here or this corner module or this railing here we know are true. So if we click on any one of those flat surfaces and then insert the object, you can see it comes in correctly. Once it's incorrectly, we can then move it around. Now you might ask yourself the question, well, why don't you just have it so it always inserts at the right location? And that's a fair enough point, but remember what you're looking at is the free version of the tool. And in the master upgrade of the software, we actually have far more functionality. We can do contoured land. We don't have to have flat land. We can build up the land to, to you know, smooth curved surfaces and things like that. So when we're dealing with um, you know, not the basic functionality of the tool, what we like is to be able to insert the object at the location that we click on. So if it's flat, it comes in flat. If it's on a, you know, a sloping surface, it comes in at the sloping surface. So the basic functionality of the tool is that you need to nominate where you want the object to be inserted, the plane. And if everything is flat in the scene, that's great. But if you're trying to put something on top of a shipping container, we're having to deal with these uh, corrugation angles. So we need to pick the area and then insert. And the same uh, thing goes for using the shapes tool. So if you're using the shapes tool and we're creating uh, a, a shape here, you can see as long as I start the shape on this um, railing, whether it's the uh, round shapes tool or the square shapes tool, I get the shape coming in at the right location every time. Where a problem may occur is if I try to build the shape and I start, you can see here, I need to replicate this fold. Here we go, there's one. If I start not 
correctly, you can see this shape's now come in on an angle, which is particularly useful in the advanced function, uh, function or advanced version of the tool, rather. So, if you're having a problem with objects being created or being inserted, and they're not being inserted at the angle that you want them to be inserted at, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're clicking on a location that is at the same angle that we want the new object to be inserted. If that's the ground, click on the ground. If you want it to be inserted on top of a container, pick a nice flat point on top of the container and say, insert my object at this plane, at this angle, and you won't have any problems. So that's training tutorial number four. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you'll come back and visit us again for training tutorial number five.